Uh, good afternoon, or evening, or night in Europe. Um, so regarding the more of the, the tiering side of things, um, what started out reading uh, the TMO paper um, with how, how Mita is um, determining how much memory a certain workload has based on like its working set size, if, we, if, it's, if it has enough memory to, um, to work correctly um, without stalls. Um, basically, the, the idea of uh, proactive reclaim um, from the MemCG side, um, I think, I don't think, Google is also using a similar technique. Um, and about three months ago, um, Dave Rient just proposed the idea of, of moving this, not moving it, but also doing it something uh, system-wide. Um, because it makes sense not only for um, the motion, just you have um, better sorted LRUs, <clears throat> so you can make better decisions um, when you do have memory pressure. Um, and one of the, the ideas of, of, of Dave was just introducing a per node um, reclaim knob, um, you, where you basically specify the, the amount of, uh, of memory to reclaim. Um, and I wanted to basically see what the room thought of that um, in general, proactive reclaim system wide. Um, some of the, the interfaces proposed was also just uh, extending the, the debug FS uh, knob that um, the multi gen LRU brings, um, and also just uh, yeah, it, it was it was it, it was that approach. It was oh, and, and also the the C group root zero just to do system wide uh, reclaim. Um, I, in my opinion, the best not the best, but the most flexible alternative right now for system wide. I'm not a MCG person. Um, is to, to pass like a node mask um, and then just uh, start simple, just like, like the MemCG interface, um, not differentiate between the type of memory, um, just set the, the node mask, set the amount of uh, memory to reclaim, and go from there. Um, I know that there are a lot of uh, dragons in reclaim, so I just wanted to, to, to get a feel for, for this. Okay, I, I've got a mic. Uh, so one thing is uh, I don't think uh, going through debugFS is the way because uh, we really do not want to make debugFS any kind of API officially or unofficially because unofficially means officially. Yeah. And uh, with, with respect to um, uh, how the interface looks like, uh, uh, node mask versus uh, sysfs where we have per node structure and trigger a reclaim on a particular node and do that in parallel on multiple nodes versus a single uh, a single mask provided in a single yeah. interface uh, I don't have a strong opinion on that uh, I f it feels slightly better to have per node and then do things in parallel because then you can define what's your reclaim target much better because uh, what does it actually mean that I want to reclaim 100 pages from this node mask? Oh. Uh, should I prefer some node more than other? Exactly. Or, so um, yeah, so that would be my thinking. So uh, use uh, the global uh, sysfs node structure we have that. Have a trigger for each node. Define the node mask by running several processes in parallel. And that sounds like the easiest interface to me. And probably the, the hardest one to screw up with subtle details. Uh, so I would add for um, MemCG, we just added this interface, right? Um, where you can request a number of pages to reclaim on a per MemCG basis. Uh, we haven't added the node mask yet, right? Because that's still, that's still, there are still open questions on how we are generally treating um, tiered memory, right, when, when, when that comes into play. Um, because, you know, for MemCG, we just do round robin reclaim, and it actually might be enough. It's not clear yet, because you're, you're, you're demoting from the top tier to the second tier, and, and then you're also reclaiming from the second tier to backing storage. Um, and as how much you need to control a per node 
um, um, the, the amount of pressure you're applying per node. It's not entirely clear yet. So I wonder if it might more, make more sense to stick with the same approach we use for MemCG, where you just you start out with the number of pages, it, ap it applies round robin to all the nodes in the system, and then we can later add a node mask, right? If we determine we need node control, we would add it to the Cgroup interface and the global interface at the same time and the, with the same semantics, just so it's easier. Th that was another another point I wanted to to, to, to ask. Like, are are both interfaces going to be up to par future-wise, or the flags? Uh, basically, as as things get more complex, do we want to have the MCG interface up to par with the system-wide interface? So I don't I don't think uh, I don't think I see something that would where they would fund, fundamentally diverge, right? Um, uh, for us, we, we, there's, for, in our system, there's not really any global because everything is compartmentalized into C groups, right? You have system management software and you have the workload itself and you have supporting software for the workload. Um, and there's, there's no su such thing as global. So anything that systems might want to apply on the global basis, we probably also want to apply on yeah. a per C group basis. Yeah. So I think they, I, I would expect them to match up um, all the way through, yeah. And uh, I, I guess it's also too late, well, not too late, but um, it's kind of like not the idea to just have one single interface for both MemCG and, and system-wide, just passing different, different writables to the file, right? Because we are, like, I, I see, like, basically that the MemCG thing is, is pretty much upstream now. It's not there yet, but for next release, it's full of X, so uh, I, I was also kind of hopeful based, based on the fact that folks were liking proactive reclaim on the MCG level, it just translates, makes a lot of sense to also do it system wide. Yeah. So I think the uh, system wide interface has its value because uh, uh, there are two use cases um, I think I didn't mention on the mailing list. The first one is VM migration. Basically, before we migrate the VM, we want to uh, free as many pages as possible, so we don't have to migrate those free pages. So that requires a system-wide proactive reclaim. So basically, um, there's something called free page reporting. We report on um, the v a guest, a VM uh, uh, guest kernel reports free pages to VMM, and then VMM knows, oh, okay, those pages are free. I don't need to worry about uh, migrating them. So the first user case. So the second user case, which is really rare, is uh, suspending to disk. So um, that's this part of the uh, uh, thing is done by firmware. Firmware knows that um, how many pages are being used and how many pages are free. So um, if we have a lot of uh, free pages, then suspending to disk would be a lot faster. So that's all. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think adding a, a global interface is controversial, is it? If I'm reading the room right, it's just about how to structure it. Yeah. So I'm not an object and I agree with what, what are you guys <laughs> okay. doing with this. So just to point out, point out two uh, use cases. Probably the first one, I think, uh, um, one, two, um, sorry, what's that company in there? Canical? Uh, right? Yes, right. They are interested in the uh, first use case. The well, second use case, I guess, yeah, nobody really cares because nowadays nobody really um, uh, spends to disk. So, right. There are? Chrome. What? Chrome. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not that uh, you know, awkward. So we don't suspend to disk. We still, you know, um, we suspend to RAM, which is different. So RAM has to be powered. So if uh, you know uh, you unplug a battery where uh, you're suspended, to, you, the system is suspended to RAM, then you lost everything. So that's one advantage of uh, suspending to disk. But power management is getting better and better. And um, oh, sorry, I, I probably shouldn't show you guys this. <laughs> so okay, so this uh, MacBook M1, even it's suspended to RAM, you know you can leave it for a month. You can still open it, it's still power on, you still get everything back. So that's uh, um, probably off topic. That's um, 
that's where we are, uh, want to uh, get to, get the kernel, learn the kernel too. That's our, um, at least from the uh, chromosome side, that's our real competitor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> So uh, regarding that, I think there was also one use case for VM migration. Uh, when you have certain devices pass through, what you would do is you would uh, actually suspend to disk your virtual machines, such that the virtual machines, like save all information about uh, pass through devices and how to initialize them, then you would migrate the VM. And once the VM comes back up, it reinitializes the pass through devices. And what they wanted to do was also to speed up the the suspend phase, and they were also looking into like reclaim, because obviously as fast as you can suspend the VM, as fast you can then migrate the VM itself. So there are multiple use cases in that area. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice that the, I, my, 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 my motivation is uh, the motion, but it's nice that without hearing it's still, it's still beneficial. Yeah. I was just sort of thinking about the per node uh, reclaim, and, and mainly again from the GPU sort of use case. I can kind of imagine that perhaps in future um, that could be useful for us, but at, at the moment that's a bit of an imagined use case. We don't have, we haven't really identified any on the systems that we have, so I'd be okay with leaving that mm -hmm. for a future improvement, but I'd certainly, I guess, like to see that left on, on the table. Yeah. at some point. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, fantastic. I thought there was going to be a lot more people against it. Um, great. The other thing I wanted to, to, to talk about was um, the testing in, in all the tiering things that are, that are going on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, well, hardware, the, the hardware availability is obviously one of the main reasons. Um, but I'm finding that a lot of ideas are being tossed around without any proper numbers. Um, and in, in, for, for example, hot page selection. Um, that has, I, I, I like the patch set, but it has only one, uh, one benchmark. Um, that, that, that concerns me because I'm seeing that it's, it's more of the, the standard. For, for this stuff. Um, so what can we do to improve this scenario such that we can just throw workloads at, at a patch set um, and just have better information with that? Um, I've, been, I've been kind of uh, hacking at, at MMTES, uh, kind of expanding it in a way that where I can know more or less uh, when I'm, I'm consuming enough, the workload is consuming enough memory to um, spill over DRAM um, and into whatever lower or node tier. Um, right now, that's that's doable, but it's it's kind of like very experimental. But it does help the it does help determine whether or not like tiering is is actually working. Um, and my idea was just to to kind of like add. Add more tests um, for for MM tests that will just tr trigger that kind of thing without just you, without just consuming memory and just uh, end up swapping all the time, um, which is what would traditionally happen. Um, so we also kind of and, and this has been this is actively debated also uh, a way of representing uh, exporting to user space. Um, the kernel's vision of, of the different tiers. Um, I don't see that, for example, just adding a, a proc uh, sysfs file for that sort of thing is, is, so, is so bad. Um, one, because it, it's going to be there anyway. Uh, and two, because it will help this sort of testing so we can know whether or not um, we, could, we could have more, more inference as to the, the memory we're, that we're using.
So does anybody have any anything negative about that? Like just or or better ideas to improve testing with with tiering? Because I, I don't think we can make any decisions uh, here or in the future without proper benchmarks to, to see wh wh where we are. So I guess on, on the GPU side, we have some Power9 systems with coherent GPUs that we could potentially test this on, as in I could potentially test this, this on. Okay. They're not generally available. But if, if you need specific benchmarks or something like that run, on those systems, that would be something that I'd be prepared to, okay. to help with or look at. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. I mean, oh, I, I was going to say that you know I've, I've heard the idea of uh, offlining CPUs on a NUMA node, like on a two-socket system, and, and and like for the testing, right? Like, why don't we just put that out there, like when we have one of these patch series, right? And and then show the numbers with that, and say like this is the first step. Maybe uh, I don't know if you think that's a reasonable thing I, to do. I, I do, and 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 we can just start just using PMEM, like. And we can we can get more advanced as as hardware goes, but it's we need something to test uh, tiering better. That's that's it. All right, thank you.